Well, those are a few images from Kingsbury, and uh, this is the uh, the scene I've gone for. Very simple composition. A nice bright sky. Try and reflect that into the water, and then the trees sort of sweep round into the foreground. Just a little bit of snow here on the ground. We've got this big tree there dominating on the right, and then a few little reeds and rushes. So let's have a look at the materials. It's just a very simple setup. We've got our seven colours, ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. They're all Cutman watercolours squeezed and left to dry on the tube. We've got our water, tissue, 15 by 11 Fabriano and tea towel up there. So I'm going to start just by giving the paper a good soaking all over. Use clean water straight out of the jar, <coughs> clean brush. Just to lubricate it, and then I'm going to go raw sienna, clean the brush, and then ultramarine, go on the other side, and then I'm going to mix some ultramarine with some Payne's grey. And try and make it a bit darker either side to try and create a sort of lighter area in the middle. Okay, sort of. Darker. And obviously you've got you've got until the paper starts to dry and then you have to stop. So otherwise you'll end up with hard edges as opposed to these sort of stuff the way it sort of diffuses. Um, but what I might do is take out a bit of a because I don't want this too dark because we've got our tree to put in and I want to be able to see it. So I want those sort of tree branches sort of silhouetted against the a lighter sky, so I just take out a few clouds with a clean piece of tissue. Try and keep it soft because you don't want to take out everything that you've put in. So I think that'll do for that. And then, just before the paper dries, I might put these reflections in. So work out where the horizon line is. I'm going to go somewhere like that, and I'm just going to try and just try and vary that colour as I come around. Just remembering to pull down the reflections as I do it. Bit raw sienna. Quick pull down. A bit of just a touch of lemon yet. I haven't cleaned the brush yet since I started. You see how it's starting to dry a bit now there. So I've got it in just in time. Just trying to make sure this is level. Always make sure your horizon's level because otherwise it'll just look a bit odd. And you can see the advantage of pulling the reflection down as I'm going along. Because otherwise I'd have to make the um try and make the colours similar afterwards. It gets a bit, uh, a bit awkward. I think that'll do for the uh, that'll do for the background. So I'm just going to uh, see how the paper stretched here. So I'm just going to unclip it on this side and pull it tight. So we're, we've got a flat surface to work with again. And we're ready to go again. So 
Next thing I'm going to do is the uh, there's a few there's a few bushes on the right hand side that are a bit closer, so I still haven't cleaned the brush. Obviously, because it's getting closer now, I'm uh, trying to get it a bit stronger, less water, more paint. Let's put in some some sort of foreground tree in there. Bushes up there, and then we've got. I'll put our tree in next. So I want a nice dark mix. Um, just to bear everything really, making sure there's burnt umber, ultramarine. That always gets you a nice dark colour. And then I'm just going. Straight off the top of the paper, and that sort of bends around a bit like that. You can do this with the rigger if you like, but I, I just find it a lot easier. It's a lot quicker to put in with the um, with the hake. Save the rigger for the finer branches. A bit Something like that. Now if I switch to the rigger, plenty of water because the rigger they don't hold much water so you want a lots of paint, lots of water and then just put in some of the finer Few lower down as well. And then put all those little fine, the finer uh, finer twigs at the end. Rather than put them all in individually, if you just scuff, dry the clean the brush, scuff it up on the uh, tea towel. So it looks something like that. And then just Just dab into uh, all the dark stuff, and then just very lightly, just very, very lightly. There's all the finer twigs and stuff, or dead leaves, whatever, whatever you want them to be, basically. I'm sure it was green leaves, then leaves, then just go into the nice green colour on your brush, on the uh, palette. So that's enough, that just gives that impression of that tree there. Now we've got, a, got our foreground, uh, and this is a bit greener, so just trying to vary as I come down. Don't want to cover up too much of this light air, that looks quite nice. Mm, it comes down to something like that. And then back to the rigger. Plenty of water. darkish colour, it doesn't really matter what it is. And just pull up some of these grasses that live right by the shore. Right next to the water's edge. You see how quickly the water runs out on these brushes as opposed to the hake. It's, uh, it's chalk and cheese, this brush and the hake brush. And then I'm not quite sure 
Hard to tell what colour the tops are on these. Uh, let's pick a colour. What colour should we go for? Um, go for raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. Well, a bit of everything. Just take a bit of everything. And then if we just sort of a few little dots, just the tops of these uh, things. Sticking with the rigger. Little birds. I think that's all we need to do for our little uh, lakeside scene. I'll be sticking this down the corner. That's just a very simple impression of um, Swan Paul at uh, Kingsborough. Let's have a closer look at it. This is our finished painting. Let's have a look at the photograph. So the first thing I've tried to capture is this big light area in the sky. So I've done that. I've put a broad sienna and then sort of brushed in either side the sort of Payne's Grey Ultramarine and then reflected that down into the water area as well. See the trees along the shoreline, very similar tone in the uh, in the photograph. You also also notice there's no reflection. Also I think they just look nicer with the reflection in the water. Also I've tried to vary the colour a little bit more than in the picture, in the photo. On the right foreground we've got this big, big tree dominating. And you can see why when I was putting the sky in, I took off some of the blue, the dark, darker colour with the tissue to create the lighter area so the the trunk and the branches would contrast more against the sky. Here we go, a simple foreground here with the brushes. You'll notice the snow, which I haven't put in. Where I did cock up on the planning, if you notice as I was brushing in the sky. The darker, putting in the darker blues, I've sort of covered this area up. If I'd have left it white, see, like I have like this corner of the paper here, if I'd have left more white bits like that, I could have left those there and it would have looked like snow. But because it was already blue, I couldn't really, I could have used like white gouache or something if I had any. I'm sure I've got some somewhere, but I try not to use the uh, gouache. Just keep it strictly to uh, the watercolours. Well, I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing. Any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.